What is up, guys? It's your boy DFS Jimmy back for the second week of the 2019 PGA Tour season. Uh, this week we are sticking with the Hawaii theme, uh, still in the islands, but uh, we're transitioning courses. Going to move over to Wailai Country Club uh, on the island of Honolulu. Uh, it is uh, it's on the east side of the island. Uh, maybe not quite as exposed. Uh, as uh, the course last week, or at least maybe not going to be quite as windy, uh, still pretty exposed, but uh, the weather projects to be a bit better, uh, a little more calm, a little bit calmer conditions throughout the week. Uh, this week, Wailai is a par 70, uh, very different golf course than the golfers saw last week. It's going to be much tighter, much more strategic golf course. Uh, really have to think about where players are going to be positioning the ball, both off the tee and into the greens. Uh, plenty of uh, plenty of scoring to be had on the course, uh, you know, despite it being a more more uh, target oriented type of golf or a more position oriented type of golf course. But um, plenty of opportunity for the the guys to score still, but uh, definitely some opportunity for some bogeys here as well if guys get themselves out of position uh, or if the winds pick up and, and sort of aid in getting them out of position. But uh, this week um, we are uh, we're going to dig into Wiley here with the uh, the card here in just a second, then we'll take a look at the history, see what guys have maybe had some su success here, what types of game style or what types of playing styles have had success here at this golf course uh, throughout the years. Uh, but before we get into that, big congratulations to Xander Schauffele, uh, you know, starting his season off right, really strong, has some local ties to the area. Dad used to be a uh, professional out in, uh, in the island, so... Uh, congratulations uh, to Xander. A big improvement on his result from the previous year uh, where he really struggled on approach. Uh, didn't have that issue on Sunday, uh, firing a 62 and getting the job done. So congratulations to Xander. Uh, big time uh, big time start to the season for a uh, really talented young kid who I expect to have a lot more, uh, lot more victories uh, as we move forward in the next couple of years. But congratulations to him. Let's dig into Wiley Country Club. Uh, you see Wiley behind me. This is one of the famous holes. Uh, number 16 has got the W with the trees here. Um, Nothing, uh, nothing too crazy around Wiley. Let's jump into the ATK card here, and uh, you'll see it's part. Like I said, it's par seventy. It's a pretty short golf course, only seven thousand yards, um, just over seven thousand yards. Rather, uh, does average three quarters of a stroke under par. And as you kind of, as we just run through here, there's only one, two three holes where 20% or more of the field is going to find a bogey. And a lot of it is really, uh, really piles up on number 13, uh, you know, averaging uh, almost a quarter stroke over par, uh, second most difficult hole in the golf course. 26% uh, of the field is going to find a bogey here on this hole. Other than those three holes though, the rest of the golf course is manageable and birdies can be had throughout, uh, the holes that are going to receive the most attention from, uh, in the birdie department, obviously the par fives, both of them pretty short, both of them fairly gettable, uh, par five ninth and the par and the par five 18th. Uh, they are certainly going to be the focus, uh, in terms of easy birdies to be had, but, uh, for the guys that are going to be at the top of the leaderboard, they're going to have their, uh, their, if their irons are dialed in and they're positioning themselves off the tee properly, uh, they're going to have plenty of opportunities for birdies. Uh, throughout their rounds, uh, you've got uh, as we as we move down, you've got two holes here that are less than 400 yards, both very gettable. Uh, absolutely, should be birdie holes uh, for the field. Uh, that is uh, the 15th hole and the 10th hole. Uh, both of those. Um, both of those are very scoreable holes, specifically the 10th, only 351 yards. Um, the rest of the course, uh, you know, the other five par fives between 400 to 450 basically play even par. Uh, your guys that are on this week, they're going to score here. Uh, guys that aren't, uh, you know, they're just going to par out or, or make the occasional bogey and struggle. Uh, the, the only the only set of holes that are really going to cause the golfers any problems are the five long par fours. They have five of them that are five holes that are over 450 yards. Uh, that, that group is really the only group uh, and it stands out. It's, uh, it's real easy to see here on the graph it stands out big time when it comes to, um, you know, it's real, it's relation to par, uh, th that group of holes is going to play over par. Everything else in the golf course though is, uh, manageable is scorable. Uh, you know, we see the, uh, we see the winning score here, uh, get, you know, a past 20, uh, you know, plenty, plenty often, uh, you get some 17 unders, 18 unders, 19 unders, 22 unders, 25 unders, Justin Thomas won here a couple of years ago, 27 under. Uh, so depending on the conditions, uh, and the ball striking, uh, guys can get after this course. Uh, but really this course does come down to ball striking. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the guys that have had success here in the past, um, based on their finishing positions from 2014 to 2018. But uh, the reality is this is a ball striker's paradise. Uh, the fairways are a bit tighter, tougher to hit, um, almost a less than driver course. Um, 
but you really have to you really have to position yourself properly in order to get after some of these pins. Uh, greens are quite a bit smaller than what the guys uh, are used to from last week, uh, and they're going to be just a hair faster. They're not going to be a ton faster, but they do they do roll a little bit faster here at Wiley compared uh, to Tournament of Champions course. So uh, expect partially because the greens are smaller, uh, but really we want to be targeting really solid ball strikers uh, on this golf course, guys that know how to manage their way around. I think you'll see uh, that's kind of the theme here uh the other thing is you know you notice that uh some of the some of the best finishes here you you don't see tons of huge names uh partially because this is a bit of a weaker field but the biggest name we see is justin thomas and he's had uh you know he's won here before but he's also had a six a 14th and a missed cut <clears throat> so it's uh it's not one of these events where you have to have a guy at the top of the leaderboard to really you know guarantee yourself success this week um there are guys all throughout the price ranges that are going to uh you know that have found success here and a lot of it centers around just consistent ball striking uh, and putting themselves consistently in the right position uh for example like you, you don't have to be a really long bomber you don't have to be a really aggressive scorer you don't have to be anything you know, like too crazy to have some strong finishes here as you notice matt kuchar in the last three times he's played uh you know He's got an, a 13th, a 3rd, and an 8th. Matt Kuchar is, you know, maybe one of the most boring golfers on tour in terms of just he's super consistent off the tee, very accurate, super consistent into the greens, and just struggles with the flat stick a little bit. Uh, but he finds success here on this golf course. Another just consummate, consistent ball striker, Gary Woodland, best course history of anybody uh, in the field this week. Uh, a 3rd, a 7th, a 6th, and a 13th in his last four outings here. Uh, this course really fits Gary Woodland's style of play where, you know, he's he, Gary's a bit of a bomber, but he does much better when he has to dial back and play a bit more conservative uh, off of the tees. Uh, and this, you know, this, I think that, you know, just seeing his course history here kind of kind of shows that and reinforces that, that this is a ball strikers golf course. Uh, you can have success here without being the greatest putter. Uh, you can have success here uh, without being the longest hitter on tour. Um, but you just have to be consistent and, and keep the ball in front of you uh, and keep the hole in front of you, not not uh, not put yourself in any bad positions off the tee. Charles Howe the third, another super consistent ball striker, had a lot of success here and uh, is is one of the is got one of the better course histories. Kyle Stanley, super consistent ball striker, not the greatest putter. J Zach Johnson, great wedge player, pretty consistent ball striker. Uh, course fits Zach Johnson's style of play, not a super long hitter off the tee, but always keeps it in play. And then you know is just deadly with his short irons and his wedges. So Zach Johnson, a great course history fits well had a lot of success here we get into a couple of newer golfers Ches Reevy, great par 70 guy again you know just doesn't do anything really you know outlandish with his distance or, or with his games not super flashy doesn't score tons but he's had success on this golf course just by being consistent keeping the ball in front of him solid ball striking uh, another guy jerry kelly like jerry kelly is like 97 years old right he's, he's not actually 97 but i'm pretty sure he's on the senior tour right now um and he comes back to play this event you see he said he's got some of the best course history in the field uh right a third a sixth a ninth a missed cut and a 14th in his last five outings a uh, lot of upside for a guy that's you know basically seven thousand dollars this week i think um but he's he's a guy that he's 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 an older guy. He doesn't have any any like really great distance. He just keeps the ball low, keeps it running, keeps it steady in front of him. Uh, is going to make sure he hits all his spots positioning off the tee. Going to make sure he hits all his spots positioning into the green, and then he gets a few putts to drop. And Jerry Kelly's you know right in the mix here as as a senior citizen um, on this golf course. So it is the type of golf course that really any of these professional golfers, if they're on for the week, can have success at. But really, what I'm focused on and what you should be focused on this week in building your lineups is finding consistent ball striking throughout all six positions that you have to select, right? You don't want to, um, we, we don't necessarily want to be looking for bombers here. We don't want to be looking for like really prolific scorers. Uh, you, you don't have to be any of those to find success and to score well here. You just have to show up and play consistent golf. And really it has to, it has to be consistent ball striking this week. So that's what I'm going to be focused on, uh, as I build my lineups. But, um, just to, uh, just to take a look, you know, first through first, uh, you know, we'll take a look at each year and go from first to like 10th and just kind of get an idea. Uh, just so if, it, if we missed anybody in the sort of first look we did based on their average, um, you know, you see some guys like that are just they kind of come out of nowhere and have success here. Tom Hoagie, James Hahn, you know, haven't had great results previous prior years, <coughs> excuse me, but found success here. Uh, last year, finding top fives, Brian Harmon, not a not a great uh, you know a great ball striker, not a long hitter, um, found success here at this golf course. Brian Stewart, same thing, great wedge player, uh, strong putter, uh, but good ball striker. Um, 
just you kind of see the theme here. Uh, but you have a you have a bunch of guys that are you know maybe second tier second tier or third tier players that are finding success on this golf course. Uh, Jamie Lovemark has had success here. Um, Chaz Reeve, we talked about Jim Herman. You know Jim Herman's a good example. Like in 2017, he had a good year, popped up and you know put a tenth up here and it ne- almost basically never made a cut prior to. So in, any of these pro golfers that that find that are in good form. Uh, or have found you know can find success on a golf course like this. It's, it's not long, short enough that any anybody that shows up with a good week of ball striking is going to find themselves uh, you know in contention for the top of a leaderboard this week. There's our guy Jerry Kelly, Hudson Swafford. Uh, you know you see you know again he's a great ball striker, a little longer than average for Hudson, but a great ball striker. Kevin Kisner had success at this golf course, great ball striker. Um, Jason Duffner, you know, again, great ball striker, places the ball well off the tee, struggles with the flat stick, but found success at this golf course. So, again, I think you guys see the theme here. Uh, you don't have to be a bomber. You don't have to be anything, you know, too like really special on tour to find success at this golf course in a given year. Uh, it, the guys that have have found success year in and year out here all share one trade in common. They are all, you know, consummate ball strikers. So, uh, just that's what you should be focused on this week. That you should, that's what you should be looking to get as much into your lineup as, as many, as many quality ball strikers as possible. Uh, again, the weather should be pretty good this week. Um, you know, always subject to change in Hawaii. So keep an eye on that, but the weather should be pretty good. Uh, so we shouldn't have too much wind to contend with. Uh, so really it should, it should just come down to these guys finding fairways, finding greens, getting a putt or two to drop. So last thing I want to look at is I want to take a look at B hacks's uh, cheat sheet here on um, fanshearsports.com. Uh, and this I have sorted by just his key stats. I just kind of wanted to give you a look at what he thinks is most important here based on key stats and uh, you know look at the five top five or six guys. No surprise, Gary Woodland. We've talked about him for a couple of different reasons on this golf course, why it fits him so well. Uh, it fits his it fits the key stats here for um for B Hacks uh you know really well this week. And his just for your reference, his are total driving, strokes gained approach, greens and regulation, and strokes gained around the green. Uh, he's got Gary Woodland leading that category. Bryson DeChambeau coming in second. Second, uh, Kevin Tway, uh, interesting name that, that you know just by stats kind of pops up in the middle, in uh, you know right at the top of the list here for B hacks. Uh, Tway a bit more of a bomber, but uh, can score really well. Uh, could be an interesting course for him if he uh, if he can dial it back and keep it in play. Uh, Justin Thomas number four, Chaz Reeve five, Charles Howell the third, six, uh, Davis Love, interesting one there. Davis Love the third uh, coming in in the top ten. Sam Ryder, Matt Kuchar, Ian Poulter, Henley, Grio, Wagner, M, Leishman, Piercy, and Kisner kind of round out the top. 15 or so uh for for him at the at um for his golfers this week in terms of uh you know just how do they line up just based on key stats alone nothing nothing else coming into play but um interesting uh to see where the top leaderboard or the top of his stats are versus you know kind of what i'm seeing this week and uh they tend to align uh got definitely some guys on this list that have had success and definitely some guys that fit Poulter's interesting to me uh Poulter, i could see having some success in a golf course like this uh for sure uh windy coastal track uh short par 70 definitely in Poulter's wheelhouse so interesting that his name pops up there but other than that guys i think that's going to wrap it up for us this week at Wild lie best of luck at the sony open uh we will catch you guys next week pick a winner good luck dfs jimmy out